I had a mentor once, he was from Italy. He told me something, a piece of advice that he thought was greatly important. But I'll come back to that. This summer I was in Lucca, only for a couple of days. It was the first time in a while I'd been below 50 degrees north. Italy is a beautiful country, and Tuscany is a particularly awe-inspiring region. Lucca is located about an hour from Pisa airport and very easy to get to by train. The city is walled, and if you've been to somewhere like York or Chester in the north of England, you'll get a familiar sense of space. It's a straightforward trip from Manchester, especially for someone like me. I live in the city centre. It's a short train ride. Can we go this way? Oh, wait, not that way. I thought the road disappeared here. Sorry. And for me, this kind of early morning airport run means coffee. The thing is, I'm trying not to use disposable coffee cups. And so when packing minimally, the choice gets narrowed down to me filling my water bottle and uh, protecting my hands with my snood. This wasn't going to be a long trip, and so the packing and planning was key. Uh, Katie usually handles planning. She's far better at logistics. That was not the most seamless journey to get here. Delayed on takeoff. Made up the time. Made up the time. And then we just sat waiting on the tarmac for like 20 minutes, half an hour. We get the train, that was all okay, and just about. Then we get to our hotel and they're like, oh, small problem, something about a baby. I didn't really understand what he was saying, but you're gonna have to move hotels for one night. We're only here for two nights. So he took us to I think it must be their B hotel, the uh, Villa Romantica. Yeah, romance is not not the first thing that I would think of. It's nice enough, though. So. Are we supposed to lock the door off the room? No, I think it locked. Okay. I think it locked anyway. We're supposed to be going to a concert tonight, New Order and Elbow. Uh, we don't have the tickets. We don't know where to pick up the tickets. We don't know where the thing is. We don't know. Well, we don't know anything about it. There's no idea how to find out any of this stuff. So that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be an interesting little mission for, for in a little bit. And hopefully we don't get run over before then. The man who is traveling and does not yet know the city awaiting him along his route, wonders what the place will be like, the barracks, the mill, the theater, the bazaar. In every city of the empire, every building is different and set in a different order. But as soon as the stranger arrives at the unknown city, his eye penetrates the pine cone of pagodas and garrets and haymows, following the scroll of canals, gardens, rubbish heaps. He immediately distinguishes the prince's palaces, the high priest's temples, the tavern, the prison, the slum. This, some say, confirms the hypothesis that each man bears in his mind a city made only of differences. A city without figures and without form, and individual cities fill it up. I try to avoid dairy and meat where possible, which can be a bit of a struggle when traveling, but Luca really surprised me. Just hoping you say something fun and interesting. Yeah. I'm having a private holiday, I will not perform for you. Katie had managed to find two vegan restaurants, although because of an error on my part, we only made it to one of those. But there was a place that served multiple styles of vegan pastries. I'll get back to that in good time though. It's nice. It's got a flip they fall. Bloody delicious. 10 out of 10. every point of this city you can in turn sleep, make tools, cook, accumulate gold, disrobe, rain, sell, question oracles. The traveller roams all around and has nothing but doubts. He is unable to distinguish the features of the city. The features he keeps distinct in his mind also mingle. He infers this. If existence in all its moments is all of itself, this city is the place of indivisible existence. But why then does the city exist? What line separates the inside from the outside? The rumble of the wheels from the howl of the wolves. Waiting for the train and over the river.
the breakfast we had this morning at Bar Cafe Nero. Not to be confused with Cafe Nero. That was really good as well. We just ordered basically all the types of vegan pastries that they had. So a couple of different vegan croissants and like a, a vegan uh, pano jamo. It was, it was really good. Tastes a bit like a Nutri-Grain bar. And the coffee. I don't tend to like Italian coffee, but Katie's, yeah, Katie's just tasted like soy milk, which I guess was good for you. Yeah, you happy about that? Mine, I got an Americana, a couple of Americanos, and the saving grace was the fact that they were like a quarter of or half the price that you know they are back home. So I had a couple of those. And they were they were decent. Bit of kombucha as well. That was nice to see. Today has been the botanical gardens and one of the towers so far. I'm going to go up the other tower in uh, in a little bit. Yeah, we've still got quite a bit more stuff to do. And then tomorrow we leave here pretty early to try and get to Pisa to see some of Pisa before we have to have to leave. I don't know about you, but I love a good conservatory and the botanical gardens in Lucca had an incredible little succulent and cactus conservatory. It's well worth a visit. And if you're gonna visit the botanical gardens, you may as well get the ticket that gets you in to the towers as well. There's something otherworldly about seeing a city from up high. A city that you don't know, a city that's crowded, a city that's interesting. Just so beautiful from above. The first tower, the one with the trees, not the one with the bells, was really overcrowded. But the fact that there was a garden up there with oak trees kind of made up for it. We're sat in the gardens of the hotel at the moment, which is the hotel we got moved to. This is Villa Romantica. So, such romance. And it's nice enough. I, I wouldn't not recommend it. It's fine. 5 out of 10. Well, supposedly it gets 9 out of 10, but I say 5. I think uh, maybe a couple more Vino Biancos and might, might get up to a 9. Oh, that's warm. That's got warm. Really interesting that they that, that was the Battle of the Boyne and we like to do jokes about that one. So nice when there's a breeze. Oh, Penny! Five Penny! What's been your favourite part so far? And the beverages. White ones. Sprite, sir. Sprite, sir. I like, I like the bottle of gardens. I like the tower a lot. We didn't get to the concert. Gonna go up the other tower now? Too tired.
so far, just a little bit hot, over halfway through the trip. I am really enjoying it here. Would recommend. Mm -hmm. Gets the KE <laughs> of approval. I think we should go and climb that tower now. Another hour, another tower. Or something like that. Seriously, knackered. Okay, you reckon she's seeing stars? Are we? No, so what's up? <gasps> I actually preferred the second tower that we visited. For one, you can see the tower with the trees, but it also wasn't as busy. And there's something nice about the solace of being able to enjoy the view without other people pushing into you. I'm usually pretty cynical about seeing things like this, but... Because it's just like, yeah, it's just a thing. And like, I've seen it in pictures and stuff. But this is really leany. It's really like, it's oddly impressive to see it. I don't know why. I'm genuinely like, impressed by it. They're all like this now. Really hard and red and hot. Not something that I thought I'd actually recommend. Uh, we nearly didn't even come, but the Leaning Tower of Pisa is actually really impressive. Oh, and the advice from my mentor? I really wish I'd listened to him. You know what he said? Yeah, neither do I. I wasn't listening. 